My son's name is Tanner. I first noticed he was ill in May of 2012. He was 12 years old. He had a uh, trip that day and just noticed that he was extremely exhausted. So we, uh, we got home that night. I said to him, wife, I said, something's not right. So we took him over to the hospital. And uh, when he done x-rays, that's when he told us that he had an enlarged heart. The doctors diagnosed Tanner with dilated cardiomyopathy, suspected caused by a virus. Uh, you could see he was getting worse. Tanner was extremely tired. For us, we were really nervous. We didn't know what the outcome was. We, you know, you're feeling hopeless. And your son's life is failing every day, and you're left wondering, what can we do? We can't do anything. And on January 22nd, he was put on a donor's list. <laughs> we were told we may, we may not be home again for a long time. Uh, six to six months to a year was the approximate estimated wait list. So we left home, didn't know if we'd have a home to go back to because financially we didn't know where that was going to take us. Knowing what Tanner needed, we knew that there would have to be something tragic happen in another family's life for that to happen. So dealing, that, dealing with that was a little bit hard as well. Merritt had just turned 18, and uh, Merritt was taking a drug for her complexion, and we didn't know that the side effect of that drug was blood clots. And in early January, after Christmas, she started feeling really tired all the time. She was sitting on the couch all curled up, and I said to her, I just asked her, what's wrong? And sweetheart, and she said, I don't know, Dad, I'm, I'm tired all the time and my heart's just racing. So she went to bed and then the phone rang. She phoned, used her cell phone and called us upstairs to say she was scared and she, her heart was racing and she couldn't come up the stairs. So, we took her to the hospital, but we didn't think it was an emergency. And uh, unfortunately, they were not prepared for what happened because her heart arrested and damage was being done to her brain because she wasn't getting oxygen. So she died of a pulmonary embolism. And the doctor said, would you consider organ donation? And Susan said to me, of course we're going to do it. <laughs> That's what Merritt wanted. Tanner was uh, very fortunate. Uh, he was a week from the data listing to uh, the call. I just said to him, I said, uh, I'll see him then. He had passed me his phone while they wheeled him away. A couple hours later, looking at his phone, he had left us a note. He said he just wanted to let us know that, you know, up to that point, he had a good life. He was very thankful that he had a good mom and dad that cared about him. And he kind of ended it off with, uh, I had a good run if I don't make it. Anyway, he was five and a half hours, and the doctor came back out and told us that, uh, yeah, she, Tanner's doing well. Five days, he was discharged from sick kids. They told us after it was the fastest post-discharge for a child from that hospital. Well, having a transplant really changed my whole life. I wasn't able to play hockey or school days so hard before, but now I can do everything I was able to do before. 
We had written our anonymous letter to the family and um, probably in April or May of 2013. In, on Valentine's Day 2014, I remember the day it was Valentine's Day, uh, we had received their letter, anonymous letter, that wasn't so anonymous, I guess, because there was identifying information in it, specifically alluding to the David Foster Foundation and the hockey game, the Merritt Cult. They has a fairly big fundraiser for Merritt every year. Tanner said, Mom, I'd really like to be part of that game. Uh, I'd like to play in her honor with her heart. I'd like to be part of playing in the game. The connections that we made from the David Foster Foundation and the the young families we've met that have benefited from organ donation and from the gifts that David Foster Foundation have given them, it's just been unbelievable. Today I'd like to give the Mackenzies a chance to listen to Merritt's heart and show them that uh, I'm alive because of her gift of life. You know, we're looking forward to meeting them and uh, we just want them to know that that all they feel is love from us. Uh, and that's the way Merritt would want it. Because from day one, I wanted to meet them. Are we really here? Is this really happening? And I guess it is. Yeah, it's a bit overwhelming. Um, I feel like they are part of my family and that I love them. Yeah, I don't know what to say. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. We're all cried out. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's her. <laughs> you know, we're just proud that our daughter's a part of that. Well, oh, she's still giving. Yes. Yep. Yep. Still giving. After every hockey game, he does this. <laughs> she does. <laughs>